Networks aren't perfect, and neither are the hosts that run on them. They can introduce errors, and for a network to be able to run properly, it needs to be able to detect these errors. For example, let's say that a router along our path has a bad memory cell, such that sometimes it flips a bit in a packet. Imagine, for example, if the bit, is f if the bit flipped is the most significant bit of the amount to charge a credit card. We need to be able to detect that error occurred so we don't accept the corrupted data as correct data. Networks today usually use three different error detection algorithms, checksums, cyclic redundancy codes, or CRCs, and message authentication codes, or MACs. Each of them has very different characteristics. Understanding their differences is important. I've actually been at meetings in the IETF where a few people weren't aware of the differences. If you don't know, you might make a bad protocol decision or protocol analysis. At a high level, error detection looks like this. We have a payload of data. We'll calculate some error detection bits over that data and either append or prepend it to the payload. For example, Ethernet appends a cyclic redundancy code, or CRC, while Transport Layer Security, TLS, appends a message authentication code. An IP prepends a checksum, which it places in the IP header. TLS and Ethernet have a footer, protocol information which follows the payload, which is where they put the CRC and MAC. The first of the three commonly used error detection algorithms is a checksum. You just add up all the data in the packet. It's what TCP and IP use. Checksums are nice because they are very fast and cheap to compute, even in software. Back when the internet started and everything was in software, this was valuable. Their major drawback is that they have pretty weak error detection guarantees. While they can catch a lot of random errors, it's easy to fool a checksum with as few as two-bit errors, if the two-bit errors cancel each other out. For example, if one bit error adds 32 and another bit error subtracts 32, the checksum won't catch the error. So a checksum can catch a lot of errors, but it turns out to have very weak guarantees on what errors it will catch. The second of the three commonly used error detection algorithms is a cyclic redundancy code, or CRC. A CRC is much more computationally intense, expensive than a checksum, but also much more robust. It computes the remainder of a polynomial. I'll show what this means and how it works in a few minutes. With today's processors, it's easy to do, and it's really easy to do on hardware. It's what Ethernet and many link layers use. In some ways, TCP and IP can get away with checksums because link layers use CRCs. If you have a CRC that's C bits long, a CRC can detect any one bit error, any two bit error, and any single burst of errors less than or equal to C bits long, as well as any odd number of errors. So it can detect a lot of errors, much stronger guarantees than a checksum. The final algorithm is something called a message authentication code, or MAC. A message authentication code combines the packet with some secret information to generate a value. In theory, someone can only generate or check the MAC if they have the secret. So if you receive a packet and the MAC is correct, then you're pretty sure the computer the computer the MAC has the secret. Unless I have the secret, it's amazingly difficult to generate the correct MAC for a packet. So a bad guy can't easily generate a new packet. In fact, if you have a strong MAC algorithm, then given one packet and its MAC, I have zero information on what the MAC will look like if I flip a single bit. Message authentication codes are therefore robust to malicious modifications. Message authentication codes are used in Transport Layer Security, TLS, which is what you use when you browse web pages securely, HTTPS. But they're actually not great for catching errors. If I flip a single bit in a packet, there's a 1 in 2 to the C chance that, ch that the changed packet will have the same MAC. I've seen people make this mistake with talking about error correction, thinking a MAC is just as good as a CRC. It's not. If I have a 16-bit CRC, I'm assured that I'll detect a burst of errors that is 16 bits long or shorter. If I have a 16-bit MAC, I'm only assured that I'll detect bit errors with very high prob probability, 99.98% or 1 in 65,536. That's high 
but think about how many packets you've watched just receiving this video. I'll now go into, go into each of these algorithms in greater detail. Let's start with a checksum. IP, UDP, and TCP use ones complement checksums. This means they add up the packet using ones complement arithmetic, a version of binary arithmetic some older computers used. Most today use twos complement arithmetic. The algorithm is pretty simple. You start by setting the checksum field of the packet to zero. Then you add every 16-bit word in the packet. Anytime you have to carry, because the sum is greater than 2 to the 16 or 65,535, you carry the, back, the bit back in. So 60,000 plus 8,000 is 68,000 minus 65,535 plus 1, or 2,466. Once you've added up the complete packet, flip the bits in your sum and make this the checksum of the packet. Then, if you add up the complete packet, including this checksum value, you should get 0xffff, all ones. There's one edge case. If the computed checksum is all ones, you don't make the checksum field zero, you make it all ones. In IP, UDP, and TCP, a checksum field of zero means there's no checksum. That's it. You can write this in just a few lines of C code. It's fast, easy to compute, and easy to check. All you need to do is add the bytes of a packet and check for that the checksum is all ones. Given that most early implementation, internet, early, uh, internet, internet implementations were in software, this is really helpful. The drawback is that it's not really that robust. While it definitely detects a lot of random errors, the guarantees it can give on what errors it detects are really weak. In practice, it can only promise to catch single bit errors, but it works pretty well and link layers do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Link layers do their heavy lifting with something called a cyclic redundancy check or CRC. The idea of a CRC is that I want to take the n bits of source data and somehow distill them down to c bits of error detection data, where c is much smaller than n. For example, I might have a 1500 byte ethernet frame with a 4 byte 32 bit CRC. USB and Bluetooth use 16 bit CRCs. Of course, we can't detect all errors. Given some other random packet, the chances the CRC matches is 2 to the minus c, or 1 and 2 to the c. For example, if I use an 8-bit CRC, then out of the space of all packets, 1 in 256, or 0.4%, had the same CRC as my packet. But CRCs are stronger than checksums. They can detect there's an error in any packet with an odd number of errors, 2-bit errors, or any single burst of errors equal to or less than C bits long. They can't guarantee detecting errors besides these, but they do a good job at it. For example, a 16-bit CRC can't guarantee it will detect two bursts of 3-bit errors spaced far apart in a packet, but it's likely it will detect it. Link layers typically use CRCs. They're pretty robust, and as many link layers are vulnerable to bursts of errors, the burst detection capabilities of CRCs is useful. It's not hard to make, them to, it's not hard to make uh, hardware compute them quickly, and you can compute them incrementally as you read or write the packet. So how does a CRC work? It distills these n bits into c bits using something called polynomial long division. You take the bits of a message and use them to describe a polynomial m. Each bit in a packet is the coefficient of one term of the polynomial. If the bit is 0, the term is absent. If the bit is 1, the term is present. So, for example, a message of 100111101 is the polynomial x to the 7th plus x to the 4th plus x to the third, plus x squared, plus one, which is, zero, is x to the zero. This is because the seventh, fourth, third, second, and zeroth bits are set in the message. When we calculate a CRC, we have something called a generator polynomial. This is defined by the CRC algorithm. For example, the CRC 16 algorithm used by USB has a generator polynomial of x to the 16th plus x to the 15th plus x squared plus one. For frustrating historical reasons, the generated polynomial is one term longer than its number of bits. The first term is always one. So the CRC16 generator polynomial is written as 0x8005, even though it has an x to the 16th term. To compute a CRC, you take the message m, pad it with zeros equal to the CRC length, and divide this padded value by g. The remainder is the CRC, which you append to the message. To check a CRC, you divide the message plus CRC by the generator polynomial G. If the remainder is zero, then the CRC passes. I won't go into the details of how this works mathematically, but it turns out it can be implemented very quickly and efficiently in hardware. The strength of your CRC algorithm depends on what generator polynomial G you pick. 
There's been a lot of study of this and so many good options which have the error detection properties I mentioned earlier. But you might not get the same error detection strength if you pick your own generator polynomial. The third and final kind of error detection algorithm you commonly see in networks is a message authentication code, or MAC. Like CRCs, there's a deep and rich mathematical background on how message authentication codes work. There are good ones and bad ones. So you generally want to use an existing scheme rather than invent your own. Thankfully, standards usually specify what MAC to use, and though there are some mistakes in the late 90s or standards picked poor algorithms, nowadays security is important enough that everyone relies on a small number of really well-studied approaches. Message authentication codes use cryptography, a branch of mathematics that deals with secrets. The idea behind most message, message authentication codes is that the two parties share a secret S. The secret is just a set of randomly generated bits, random so it's hard to guess. To calculate a message authentication code C, you apply the MAC algorithm to the message M and the secret S. MAC algorithms have the property that if you don't have S, then it's really hard to generate the correct C for a message M. Furthermore, it's very hard to create a message M whose message authentication code is C. By hard, I mean is that the best case you just have to exhaustively try. Having M and C gives you almost no information on what S is. This means that if you receive a message M with the correct message authentication code, this means the computer that generated the message probably has the secret, or someone replayed a message generated by that computer. Because the goal is to keep S a secret, cryptographically strong message authentication cause an interesting property. If you change a single bit in M, then this results in a completely new CRC, where the probability any bit in C is 0 or 1 is seemingly random and independent of the earlier C. If this weren't the case, then someone could take a message, flip a single bit, say change a dollar value, and it wouldn't be that difficult to generate the correct C. This means that technically message authentication codes have no error detection guarantees. If you flip a single bit, you could end up with the exact same MAC. Message authentication codes are very useful, but they're first and foremost a security mechanism. Being able to get both error detection and security with one mechanism is efficient and nice, but their security properties mean that their error detection isn't as good as other approaches. Let's go over the answers. Both checksums can detect a single bit error. Remember, this is one of the errors a checksum guarantees detecting. Both CRCs can also detect a single bit error. A MAC can't guarantee that it'll detect a single bit error. For security reasons, it could be that the new MAC is the same as the old one, so it can't guarantee detecting it. In fact, a MAC, can't, a MAC can't guarantee detecting any errors, so we can mark no for all the columns for the message authentication code. So how about two-bit errors? Checksums can't guarantee detecting two-bit errors, so no for both of them. CRCs, though, can detect guaranteeing bit errors runs less than or equal to the length of the CRC. Since two bits is shorter than both 8-bit and 16-bits, both CRCs can detect a run of two-bit errors. Correspondingly, an 8-bit CRC can't guarantee detecting a run of 9-bit errors, but a 16-bit CRC can. So no for the 8-bit CRC and yes for the 16-bit CRC for, for 9-bit uh, error runs. How about 2-bit errors 100 bits apart? It turns out none of these algorithms can guarantee detecting this error, so no for all of them. Looking at this matrix, you might think error detection is a waste. The algorithms promise very little, but guarantee is a very strong statement. While an 8-bit checksum can't guarantee it'll catch a run of 9-bit errors, there's a high probability it will. Similarly, a 16-bit CRC has a very high probability of detecting 2-bit errors 100 bits apart. And in practice, high probability is often good enough. If failures are rare, then you only sometimes have to do something more expensive to recover. But it means in practice, you tend to have multiple layers of error detection. The link layer detects them with CRCs, IP detects them with checksums, TCP detects them with checksums, and then often the application has its own error detection. So all put together, the chances of errors creeping through is very, very low. So we've seen three error detection schemes, checksums, CRCs, and message authentication codes. Data error detection is a great example of the end-to-end -end principle. It's actually what originally motivated the principle. The only way a layer can be sure that it communicates data correctly is to perform an end-to-end -end check. Ethernet needs to be sure that its frames don't have errors so it can parse them correctly, so it has a CRC. IP needs to be sure that its packets don't have errors so it can parse them correctly. IP can't depend on what Ethernet is doing to check for its own check. The Ethernet card or driver might introduce an error after that after the driver checks the packet. So IP has to do its own end-to-end -end check at the network layer. T 
TLS using message authentication codes is another example. It's especially interesting because TLS has very different error detection requirements than IP Ethernet. It wants security. So it has to provide, it, provide its own end-to-end -end error detection scheme as it's the only way it's sure that it's, it's the only way it can be sure its requirements are met.